of that song and the words of that song. Yeah. Holiness, holiness. It's what I long for. And as you know, it's a, it's a big deal. I mean, for me right now, I believe that uh, the issue of holiness plays out in, in a very, very important way in that holiness is what? What is holiness again? Yeah, be set apart. That we'd be a people set apart unto Jesus, uh, that we would not conform to the pattern of this world, but that we'd be transformed. And in a way, if you think about it, that's what it's about here in the life of Asbury Church, that we would connect, that we would serve, that we would grow, that that's part of the ministry, the mission that leads us to the vision of the transformation of the whole person through the love and power of Jesus Christ. And so uh, I, I didn't know she was going to play that song. Thank you, dear. And uh, it's a great song of hel- holiness, and that's what we're called to be. God is holy, therefore let us be holy. I could preach, I guess, huh? But... Uh, well, as I said to the kids, uh, Happy New Year, eh? Happy New Year. So, I'm glad that you all decided to make it today. For me, it's my first opportunity to be with you in this new year. Here we are, almost a month into 2019. It's hard to believe, and so we're getting ready in 11 months for Christmas. And uh, we're gearing up and trying to think through all that. And <laughs> Wow, time gets away, doesn't it? But anyways, uh, it, it's good. And like I said, in case you don't know, my name is Rick Just. I am the senior pastor here, even though you haven't seen me for a month. Uh, but it is very good to be back, and I appreciate, uh, appreciate the opportunity to be gone for a little bit. Um, I'll give you just a little report. I could give you uh, a long, extended report. I'll try not to do that, but just a few things that are happening uh, or have been happening since I took off. I, I sought to be intentional about you know, listening to the Lord and, and paying attention to some of the things that I felt that maybe He might be uh, saying to me and pointing uh, to me with regards to you and vision and so forth. But spent some time, obviously, when I left. That was Christmas time, so we got to spend some time with family. And, and that's always good. I always love it when our kids come because I always have them read the Christmas story. So they read every bit from, from Matthew and Luke and so forth and to hear them as they're growing up and see their parents raising them in the faith. That's, that's, that's worth a lot to us. I uh, spent some time reading uh, several books and, and of, of Scripture. Here, I didn't tell the 8 o'clock folks this, but uh, if you want to push yourself, I read the whole book of Isaiah in one setting. Yeah. 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 It takes, it, you can't do it in 30 minutes, by the way. <clears throat> but I had a little time, thank you, and I read it in the message. I'd never read it in the message, Eugene Peterson's paraphrase before, and and so I did that. Then I read the whole book of Luke 24, of Luke, not 24, of Luke uh, in, in, in one setting. And, and there's those times when you read that whole thing that it, it grabs you in a different way because you see that whole flow of what God is doing. So, plus some other books and things, spent some time in prayer, spent some time praying and playing. I did a few things with my brothers and some friends out west and so forth. Uh, I sought to rest a little bit. I don't do that too well, you know that, but I, I did... I seek to do that a little bit. Uh, I, I confess to you, I did a little bit of work. Uh, when I was out to western Kansas, they heard I was out there. And they said, well, since you're here, would you mind, and, and you know I'm involved in the WCA thing, they said, would you, would you mind doing a little presentation for us? And so I shared some things and, you know, with them, and we had an Emmaus meeting uh, out there as well. And so we you know, had one weekend of a little bit of work mixed in the play, and that was okay. It's just fine. And then some time of reflection, uh, which, you know, that whole pondering thing, you know, uh, to sit and reflect a little bit. It takes a little, it takes some effort, at least on my part, to do that. I don't know about you. One of the things I, I did was listen to all four of the sermons of the people who preached while I was gone. I'm telling you what, home runs, baby. I mean, if you missed, wasn't it great? Yeah. I mean, incredible. We had Ben Zikafus from over here at the Carpenter Place uh, speaking to us about, you know, why are you here and talking about ministry to, to especially those girls that, that are going through difficult times and how maybe we can be involved in, in ministry with and to them and for them. And, and then we had Mitch Reese here, our DS. I've been a friend with him for years, and, and he uh, shared the reset button. Remember? Reset. Man, that was an awesome sermon. And then last week, JP, or a week ago, JP preached, uh, and he talked about the calling and how that ties into the connecting and serving and growing that moves us into the vision, and and, uh, it was awesome. (laughs) It was awesome. I loved how he said at the beginning, oh, I got this email from Pastor Rick, and I quickly shut it off. (laughs) 
<laughs> but he did great. I knew he would. And then Pastor Susan last week, awesome, great on trusting the Lord. And some of that ties right into where I want to go today. And so, man, good stuff. I hope you didn't stay home uh, at all. If not, if you did, for some reason, go, go listen to those online or on the app. And uh, they're wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Thanks to the board for allowing me that time away. I appreciate that very much. Uh, it's helpful. I've never done that before, so uh, it's helpful. Appreciate the staff. I, I wasn't worried about them. They, they do great work, and so they kept the ship afloat and going the right direction. And, you know, you all don't have to worry about that. It, it, we have good staff. I took the opportunity to visit uh, several churches. I wanted to do that while I had some time off. And, and I don't know how you do it. I mean, if you just come to the 1045 service, let's say you don't come to Sunday school or anything in before. If, if it's just the 1045, what do you do all those hours till then? On a Sunday morning, I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm going, man, how do people do that? I am twiddling my thumbs. It's like, I got to get out of here. I mean, wh- wh- and so uh, there were a lot of times I'd go to two services on a Sunday morning because I couldn't wait for the second one. I mean, you know, I had to get going. And, and so there's one Sunday where I went to a, a very large church. Uh, with multiple services and a, a lot going on, a whole other setting. Uh, and then that evening, Mary Lou and I went to a uh, home church that had just started. Great, great contrast, but yet God working in, in multitude of ways. Uh, last Sunday, I went to a, another large church uh, that has some multiple services. I like to sit in the back and observe and kind of see what's going on. How does this all sort itself out? And I followed that then by going down to the New Covenant where Kathy Holly's at down in Delano. Man, that gal rocks it. She is in the place she needs to be to to minister in that whole uh, chaotic world of Delano and all that goes on down there. And she's so wonderful. It was great. And I got to talk to some people that, I mean, I've met a few of those folks before that have been there, but then others that were new. And, and, you know, it's when it's prayer request time, we don't have it so much here in Asbury where somebody's going to say, well, I've been 30 days clean. You know, that's, that's most of what the testimonies are. I've been clean for 60 days or all, all those kind of things. So oh, it was great. And then all sorts of things in between. So, you know, I paid attention. I uh, observed. I came away with a lot of observations from being at those churches as well as just uh, my own time away. And it led me to today's sermon which then is leading uh, me and us, I believe, to the next three weeks, which I'm going to have a little mini-series. I'm going to call it Gone with the Wind. And what I mean by that is the Holy Spirit wind. All right? Because we cannot do what God is calling us to do unless we're empowered by the Holy Spirit to get it done. We cannot do it on our own. If we could do the stuff on our own, we would not need God. We need God through the power of His Holy Spirit. So we're going to talk about for that for three weeks, and then there's a few things. Well, then the, the general conference follows and some things, so uh, all sorts of fun and exciting times. So it leads to some things I want to talk about today, and there's three points. Imagine that I'm going to do three points today, but uh, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, and, and they all start with CH. The first one is challenges, the second is changes, and the third is choices. Challenges, changes, and choices. If you have the app, you can follow along with some notes there. Uh, Otherwise, just take some notes on your own if you'd like. But first of all, challenges. Now, let's think about this a little bit. If we're going to think about a definition of a challenge, the definition would be this. Something new and difficult which requires great effort and determination. All right? Place that up there, Michael, that definition. Something new and difficult which requires great effort and determination. Now there's a word, new. There's a word, difficult. Determination, all these things that play out. Now many of the churches, since it was January, and it's just kind of a typical thing that happens in January, but many of the churches that I visited uh, were speaking about New Year's resolutions. Resolutions. And uh, it was one church had a children's time where they talked to the kids about resolutions. And, of course, the kids, that's a big word, you know. Resolution is a decision we make whereby we can better ourselves. And if you think about that, uh, many people, you know, what, what's probably the top resolution that people have at the first of the year? Losing weight. Ding, 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 ding. Right. Losing weight. 
And so it's that physical thing. Maybe quitting smoking or some of those kind of things, but there's something physical. Exercise, I'm going to go to the why, and then you ask why, right? <clears throat> but uh, that physical thing. Then there's some resolutions of just about our emotional state, just to kind of get my tapes going all in the same place in my head, you know? And, and what all that means, the emotional intelligence of who I am, of who we are, how we, how we uh, work together, and how that all plays out. And then, of course, there's all sorts of things, but then there's that of the spirituality uh, of our relationship with God and ultimately our relationship with one another and what that looks like. And yet we realize statistics will speak to us about these resolutions that, you know, by February, guess what? Almost every one of them, like I told the kids, they're gone. It's just, forget it. I had to laugh. I was at, at this meeting in Garden City yesterday, and uh, somehow the word resolutions came up in the midst of a question about a person going to Sunday school. Are you going to Sunday school at your church? She said, no, but that's my New Year's resolutions, although I haven't got there yet. <laughs> We're four weeks in, baby. <laughs> now you're really cranking it. <clears throat> Anyways, you know... So often we break those and are back to the same old, same old. Now, the, the challenge is that we, it's not so much the making of the resolutions, but it's the keeping of them. And so I've pondered a bunch of things here this past month and listening to some of the things at churches and, and various things, even on some podcasts and so forth. And, and I was reading in several places, at least two, and I came across this Hebrew word, shana, shana, it's Hebrew which can mean repeat or duplicate. So if you think about the Jewish New Year, we think of Rosh Hashanah or Rosh Hashanah. Okay, so it's, the implication is there is a new year. There is that which is new. And so this word was playing out in, in, in my head a little bit as I was reading and, and looking at it. And, and when you think about the word repeat, or duplicate, it means you do this something over and over again. So here we are, it's winter time. Didn't we just have winter last year? And the year before? And the year before? And the year before? So in other words, winter keeps coming. It just keeps coming back. And that winter time, we always know that, well, you know, there's probably going to be some snow on the ground. There's probably going to be a little ice out there. It's probably going to get cold. Uh, the car's probably not going to start. The pond's probably going to freeze over. The pipes are probably going to break. Uh, our bones are probably going to break. You know, all these things that happen in wintertime. There are no leaves. We don't have to mow. I do like that part. Uh, you know, but this is what happens in winter. And then spring comes along, and in February, all of a sudden, these little green things start to shoot up, and, and all of a sudden, these little things happen on the trees, little buds, and they start turning into leaves, and it starts to get a little bit warmer, and, and the, the daylight gets a little bit longer, and that sun's moving over a little bit differently, and... and well, wait a minute, didn't that happen last year? Well, yes, it did. And then summertime comes along, and man, it starts getting hot, and we get all humid, and, you know, you can keep that down in Houston, that humidity. How do you like that? Ugh. But, uh, you know, it gets all hot and humid, and you know, it's just, you know, then the air conditioner's coming on, and, uh, but didn't we do that last year, that whole summer thing? And, and then fall comes God's time of year, right? I always think it's interesting. It's kind of ironic, this is the Rick just paraphrase, but that fall is God's time of year, especially in light of Genesis 3, the fall that got us into the mess we're in right now. <laughs> Not the same word. But uh, let's, let's just say autumn, okay? So the leaves begin to turn beautiful, like last year, wow, you know, and and uh, it starts to cool off, and the humidity starts going back to Houston where it belongs, and, 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 and these things begin to happen. And so the fall comes, and football, yeah, and, and all this kind of stuff. So every year, winter, spring, summer, fall, boom, 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 boom. I mean, it's repeat, 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 same old, same old. But you know, we as Christians, we kind of get in that whole repeat mode too, don't we? It's kind of like, tukum, 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 tukum. and we, uh, you know, I said it to the staff. I said, you know, about Christmas. Didn't we do that last year? Sometimes, I mean, I, I love Christmas. And then on the, on the other hand, at times it's like, didn't we just do this? And, and what's the point of what we just did, of what we're doing compared to what we just did? And it's like, man, there's, God, it seems like there ought to be something fresh about this Christmas thing, you know? 
And then, you know, I just know, when I was preaching in, in Salina at that church, third Thursday, every October, chicken noodle dinner, book it, Dano, just know it, every year, do not change it, thou shalt go to hell. If you change it, do not change it. I mean, there's some battles. There's some hills you're going to die on. Don't change the chicken noodle dinner. You don't want them women after you. So you just know that every year. And I can, other, you're kind of messing me up, Stan. I hate to tell you. Your whole row is kind of messing me up here. Because here's what I was going to say, and I'm going to say it anyways. Every Sunday, I know where you're going to be. Because you sit in the same spot. Every Sunday, and then they go and blow my whole sermon illustration because they knew they wanted to mess with this mind. All right, good for you. <laughs> but so, but you know, yes, yeah, you're going to get up and move now, brother. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, you get you get in those habits, and you do the same old and the same old and the same old, and the order of service. The reason we don't print the order of service. Is so that you don't know what the order of service is. The problem is you know the order of service, so if we do it different, you're going to tell me it's wrong. Right? Man, let, I'll pick on an 8 o'clock person because they're not here. Allison. Allison Woods. She sits right there, right down there, okay, every 8 o'clock service. If we so much as get something just not quite right with the service, I mean, if we do it a little different, she's not shy if you know Allison. Hey, that, that's not now. It is today, Allison. <laughs> but you know, we get into this. We get into this same old, same old, same old, same old, same old. And pretty soon we get into this. It's called this, a rut. A rut is nothing more than a grave with both ends kicked out. You know that. A rut is that where there is a dead end. And so there's a dead end. If there's a dead end, you can't keep going. But why do we put ourselves in the dead end? Why do we keep doing what we keep doing what we keep doing and only to keep not doing anything? At times. And so we find ourselves in a rut. And so then in churches even, believe it or not, I know you can't believe it, we get a little lethargic, we get a little apathetic at times. We begin at times, churches can argue about petty things. I know not never at Asbury this happened, but, you know, some petty things and holy cow, whatever happened to cake donuts? That's right, see? You're already ready to leave the church and go to another one because we don't have cake donuts. And we better have the dadgum donuts here at the same time, at the same place, for the same people, for the same price every week. Or I will leave the church. And we laugh and yet realize how true it is, right? Huh? All the time when we've got these banners to remind us we are here to connect with God and each other, serve God and each other, and to grow in God and, and in our relationship with each other that we might be about the transformation of the whole person through the love and power of Jesus Christ. There are some things that really matter. Now, for many people, for many people, they go, oh, oh, if we could just go back to the good old days. Oh. Back when Kip was youth pastor here at Asbury. If we could just go back to the good old days. You know, when, when everything was great, never a problem. When, when, when I, well, I remember when, and then you fill in the blank, you know, and everything was wonderful. All was great. My dad told me one time, you know, the good old days weren't really that all, all that good. God has something to say about that. Listen to this from Isaiah 43. You know this passage. You wouldn't be surprised that I'm reading it today. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the what? The past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me, the jackals and the owls, because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I form for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. Now you're going, okay, well, what's the deal here? Well, think about this. God is speaking to a people, if you read the previous verses, who are hung up on what God did for them 
in the past. The Exodus events. Think about the Exodus. I mean, man, who wouldn't want to be a part of that in a way? To be freed from slavery. God does this incredible, miraculous thing. He parts the waters. We walk through. We get to stand at the other end and watch the Egyptians drown. Thumbs up. Emoji. Smile. You know? And we go through, and, and, and I know we kind of messed up. Eleven days we could have been in the promised land. Took us 40 years, but still. God did some incredible things. Gave us manna and quail. And didn't have to get new shoes. Sorry, ladies. But uh, the whole thing. And yet God is saying, don't get hung up on that. Don't dwell on that. In fact, leave that behind because here's where you are today and here's where I want to take you. Let that go. Not that you're not to remember, to learn from it, but don't just sit here sitting here waxing nostalgic about it all. But allow yourself to be a part of that, what God has for you with regards to that which is new. In verse 19, we find out that God is doing a new thing. A new thing. Now, here's my question, Asbury. Anybody interested? It's not rhetorical. Help me. Thank you. I mean, I don't want to have to manipulate here, but I know you well enough that I can ask you these questions. But I'm just saying, I think, I think people are interested in God doing new things in and through us and even in spite of us and that we get to experience and be a part of something new, whatever the new thing is. So if we're going to do that, we've got to let go of the past. So I realize, I mean, Asbury's had incredible history. We know that. And I, I believe Asbury has incredible future. Okay? That was really kind of an amen moment. Um, that nah, didn't work. No, nah. no. Nah. Nah. But here. So we've got to respond, if you will, to the challenge to get out of the rut, the grave, both ends kicked out, to get out of the rut, be open to his invitation to join him in his new thing, and then, as Nike says, to just do it. Just do it. So it leads to the second point. Kind of the scary word, the scary C word. There's all sorts of scary C words out there, I understand that. But this one is scary for so many people. And it's changes. Changes. Change is defined as to make or become different. To make or become different. And you've all, many of you, read from Mark Twain, who says the only person who likes change is a baby with a wet diaper. Right? So, you know, change. It's one of those things. And people like familiarity. That's why you like to sit in the same pew every Sunday, except for those four who messed me up this day, you know. But, I mean, we do that. We get familiar. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. That's helpful. But we, we get in this rhythm where we get comfortable. I remember somebody getting really mad at me at a previous church one time because I was doing things that made them uncomfortable. And I didn't realize in my job description it was to make them comfortable. I, I didn't read it. It was really small print somewhere, I guess. But, uh, you know, the whole thing about uh, we don't want to leave our comfort zone. And let's be honest, we really don't. We really don't. We like the rhythms. Um, we like to avoid interruptions. We like to avoid change. I'll pick on my Baptist friends here. How many Baptists does it take to change a light bulb? Change? <laughs> Stick with me. Methodists are the same way. Are we getting it? Do we get that one? I don't need to explain that, right? Okay. Leslie's got it. If you don't know, just ask her. So I make this phone call this last week. So I call this gal out in western Kansas, because, you know, we're getting ready to do this walk to Emmaus. And I'm the spiritual director of the women's walk, pray for me, uh, and so I called her and I said, look, I really, really would like to invite you to come and be a part of this walk to Emmaus. It's a spiritual retreat weekend, renewal weekend, and your husband to go the week before with the guys, and then you go, and I'm going to be the spiritual director. You know me. Mary Lou's going to be there playing the piano. You know her. There's a few other people that are going to be there that you know. It's going to be okay. You're going you're gonna, to, I really, and she's just starting to hyperventilate on the telephone. I can start, I mean, you know, you can just feel it. And she goes, you know me, I hate change, I don't do change, she said. So I challenged her, we went back and forth, back and forth, and by the end of the conversation, I'm thinking, baby, I won this one. She's coming, because she was thinking, okay, well, then I get a text, and she says this, she says, change makes, 
This is so awesome. I asked her if it was okay. I'm not going to name her. Change makes me physically ill, makes me blow discs and gain weight. That's what happened when I got brave enough to fly. I got so stressed out, it pushed that disc right out. (laughs) This is classic. And so I responded. I wrote to her. I said, you are a piece of work. And she responds, I'll consider myself a masterpiece. (laughs) True, I've got it here. And, and so I'm thinking, gee, many Christmas. And unfortunately, there was a, some, some, a state wrestling meet that her husband's involved in, and so he can't come, but I will not let up. But if, if you think about this thing, return with me now to this word, shana. We talk about duplicate, repeat. But in Hebrew, these words always have a d- double meaning so often. And the other piece of it means change. Okay? Duplicate, repeat, change. And, and, and with change comes the understanding that something new takes place. Something new. All right? And in that something new, it's not just some theoretical thing floating around out there in the cosmos somewhere. It leads to some kind of, of action. Now, I realize it can be circumstantial. I realize that things can happen in our lives that cause change that uh, we had no plans or we had, we had no control over, a death in the family, uh, certain struggles, uh, the things that, uh, that are just going on. And, and so, you know, there's responses to that, and some of that can be negative for a period of time. I get that. But in this, the implication here is that uh, it leads to something that is fruitful and productive that comes as a result of the change. So in the case of the Shana, within the replication or the duplication or the same old, same old, same old of the season is the reality that newness can take place within it because a change occurs. So in the middle of that which always is the same, that which always repeats, change can occur and good things can occur amongst the change within that which repeats. Don't ask me to repeat that again. I don't know what I just said, but I just think it makes a lot of sense. All right, but I mean, if you think about it, replication, change, and those things can come together and be good. Now, as Christians, really, I mean, uh, as Christians, we, we really should be responding to this with, with the big amen, amen, amen. Think about it with me. A faith example from 2 Corinthians 5.17. Paul is writing to a messed up church in Corinth. And in the middle of this, he says, therefore, he's talking about reconciliation here, but he says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The new creation has come. And, you know, I put in parentheses, that person is a new creation. The old is gone, and the what? The new is here. Emphasis upon new. The old is gone, the new has come. Paul is saying, look, friends, you have placed your faith in Jesus Christ. And because of Jesus Christ, you have been given new life. There's a newness of life that plays out now that moves you forward, that catapults you forward, that keeps you from hanging on to the past so much because the old will drag us down. It's always amazing to me how we can give our lives to Jesus and we can be in the life of the church and and we'll lay our burdens at the foot of the cross or on the altar or whatever and right before church, right when we're getting ready to go, we pick them back up and we walk out with them. And Jesus saying, wait a minute, I just died for you so you didn't have to do that. The old is gone. The new has come. The old is behind you. The new is the now and what's before you. Let the old go. You are a new creation. Abundant life is before you. And that's that's who we are because of Jesus. Sometimes, I mean, let's let's be honest, sometimes we don't act that way. Sometimes, you know, if I'm a non-church person, sometimes I go, why would I want to go there? Why would I want to be a part of the church? Man, they're more messed up than I am. Well, it's because we're still messed around with the old. The new has come. Romans 6, 4, Paul writes, he says, We were therefore buried with him through baptism unto death, in order that just as Christ was raised through the glory of the Father, we too may live what? What? Read it. Where is it? There! (laughs) You're killing me, Michael! If you were out there in internet land, the words didn't come up, and they're all going, Rick, you're a nutcase. (laughs) We too may live a... Okay. (laughs) He did that to me on purpose. A new life. 
but there, there's a newness of life. And that we are buried, I mean, our sins are buried. The old is buried, the new has come. We're raised up just as Jesus was raised up from the dead. We too are raised up from the death of our sins. We're forgiven of our sins. We're offered new life. And as Susan preached last week, we're offered more than just new life. We are offered abundant life, overflowing life, overflowing you know, there's more to this life than just the daily existence. Just because one breathes doesn't mean they have life. I mean, what's behind it? Life is much more than just breathing in, breathing out on a daily basis. Life is, is, is that which is defined by, by joy and gratitude and meaning and purpose and relationships and, and new experiences. And, and I'm not saying we don't go through the tough times because I know you well enough. I know, I know some of the stuff you're going through, what we're going through. It's difficult. It's grunt and groan. There are struggles. There's heartache at times. But that the newness promises us that we are victorious in Jesus and we are blessed. And so that's important for us today because life, new life, is about looking forward, not looking back, which has an understanding of vision that plays out. Vision is a picture of the future that produces passion. What is it that gives us passion? What is it that we get excited about? What is it that, that maybe I can be about here with you to lead you as we move through 2019 that we can get excited about? What is it that we could, where we could paint the picture? I mean, when it says, welcome to Asbury Church, do we really welcome people to Asbury Church? Is it really welcoming or is it, uh, yeah, whatever, to Asbury Church, to Asbury, the body of believers who lift up Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior so that you too might have abundant life? All these things. And so it leads to the last point of choices. Choices. You see, as I was praying, and you know, I was praying, you know, oh man, I was, you know, I've got to report to the church. I've got to report to the board. Uh, God's got to do something big in my life so I can report it back, you know. I don't want to mess up here. So I'm praying, you know, God, you know, do this big old, let's do the Mount Carmel thing. You know, remember that? When Elijah's there and bring down the fire, let's put the hammer down. Let's lick up the water in the trenches. Let's pull the Clint Eastwood Colt 45 out and let's get after it. Oh, 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 oh. You know, God, let's do something awesome. Do something like that. And he, and he really didn't. I'm thinking, man. But here's the deal. As you noticed, I like to talk. <laughs> and so he says, shut up. He says, no, I'll say, he says, be quiet for a moment and listen. And in the listening, here's the word he gave me for 2019. Choices. 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 I thought, man, choices. Kept coming back, coming back, things I was reading, choices. Choices defined as an act of selecting or making a decision when faced with two or more possibilities. So you're at the grocery store. I don't know if they still do this. Back in the good old days, they would say, you remember the good old days? Oh, if we could only go back. Paper or plastic? Oh, man, if that's the toughest choice of the day, I'm in. You know, paper or plastic? Salad or steak? Well, duh. Right? Hunting or not hunting? Duh. <laughs> All right, Kelly, this is for you. Patriots or Rams? <laughs> yeah. You know, I wish I had other choices right now, but that's where we're at. Sometimes you've got to live with the choices that are before you. But life is about choices. And there are consequences for every choice we make. There are consequences for the good choices. There are consequences for the bad choices. Now the implication, if there are good choices, if we make good choices, that normally, but you know, there's just sometimes struggles, but there's good consequences. But it, when there's bad choices made, you can always be sure that there are bad consequences. That you will go down the wrong road and probably end up in that rut much deeper than, than where you were before. And then there are those who are saying, oh, I'm not going to make a choice. Friends, that is a choice. Not making a choice is a choice. And choices have a direct correlation to changes. They're tied together. And so if, if we're having the challenges that are before us, and we know that change plays out in the midst of the shana, the, the newness that is before us and changes that go on, we know that in order for some of these changes to occur, we must make choices. We must make choices to live out the change that we're called to, uh, to do and be about. And one thing we know is there's a, the one constant is that of change. 
we will always face change. It's, it's always going to be there. And as Christians, as, as, Bar- as Barians, um, we, we will either change for the better or we, ch- we will change for the worse. And I'm here to tell you, as your pastor, we are not considering the second option. We're not. We're not considering changing for the worse. We're just not going to do that. We're going to consider what it means to change for the better, whatever that means for God to do, in our, whatever that means for what God wants to do in our lives. Change, we take change head on. Whatever that looks like. And friends, I'm not just talking about the general conference stuff, although that plays into it. I'm just talking about who God calls us to be in the life of Asbury Church in this community and how we've got to do that which is different than what we've done if we're going to make an impact on this community. And even in the lives of those who say we are members of Asbury Church. We're not going to be defined by making uh, the bad choices. We're going to submit ourselves and surrender ourselves to the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Because we cannot do what God wants us to do apart from God and the Spirit that He gives us to empower us and to gift us to do what He calls us to do. If we could, we would not need God. But man, we need God. We can't do it without Him. Whatever choices we do or we make in this coming year, We will be in keeping with God's holy and authoritative word, the truth by which all subsequent truth is measured. Amen? This is the truth of God. It is trustworthy and true. It has withstood the test of time. It will be here. It was here yesterday. It is here today. It will be here tomorrow. It will be here until Jesus comes again, and he will come as the personified word. We will stand on the word of God. Holy and authoritative. Holiness, as Mary Lou played a while ago. We will live in obedience to Jesus, our Lord and Savior. I know that's grunt and groan. It's a struggle. It's a, disciple. it's a discipline. That's why it's called discipleship. Uh, we're going to follow him because he's given us new life. And new life is all about the change that comes as a result of the choice to follow Jesus. We sing the song, do we mean it? I have decided to follow Jesus. What's the rest of it? No turning back. No turning back. The old is gone. The new has come. Mary Lou, you'll get a kick out of this. Steve Rankin called me the other night, and, and, and uh, Steve and I, we've been friends for 100 years, give or take 60. And, uh, <laughs> uh, but he called me, and uh, we, we were talking about some of the things going on. Yeah, some of this church stuff, and then some stuff in life and, and whatnot. And just, uh, we both find ourselves kind of what I guess what Jeremiah would say at, at a crossroads. All right? And we're both talking about what that looks like for us in 2019 and, 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 and so forth. Got to talking about it a little bit more. And, and, then, and then in the midst of the conversation, I said, yeah, I said, yeah, and you remember. You remember when we loaded up in 1988, your family and my family, and we caravaned and we moved to Chicago. We sold everything we had, and we moved to Chicago to go to school, to be uh, obedient to you, to be in ministry for you. And he kind of laughed about that. Yeah, he said, man, we, we were young and, and almost seemed like a little foolish then. And I thought, man, is this what we've done to our calling? I said, you know, I've got thinking about it because Mitch Reese and I've talked about this before. Are we willing to do today what we did then? To do whatever it means, whatever it takes to follow Jesus wherever it is that he calls us to go? Is that just because we were young and foolish? I don't really think we were young and foolish. I'm sure we had some of that playing out. But uh, we just walked out in obedience. And I'm not so sure God's not saying the same thing right now, whatever that means in our lives, because I have that same feeling. I remember Mary Lou and I and Mary and, and Joni and Steve were sitting around a card table, and we were praying, and we were going, God! We were kind of laying out some rules for God, like that's going to work. <laughs> we're, saying, we're going, God, just, just send us just send us what you want to do in a letter in the mailbox. Just send a letter in the mailbox, put it in there, we'll open it up, and we'll do it. Anybody ever done that? Yeah. And so in a way, it's kind of like, I, I, all of a sudden, here I have this feeling again, like we're around the card table, and we're going, God, just put the letter in the mailbox, or nowadays, the email, the text, the blah, 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 blah uh, and, and, and let us know. So that we can be clear. But I remember back then, it was only clear when we took the step of faith. 
And it's only going to be clear for us in 2019, whatever is before us, when we take the step of faith. You see, we just can't continue to do what we've always done and expect different results. We know that's insanity. You've heard that before. We can't do that. But we do remember, when we're thinking back to what Susan was talking about last week at the, towards the end of her sermon, and she said, we stand at the edge of our promised land. Remember that? I don't know if you do, just nod your head, say yes. But in Joshua 24, he is surrounded with, with the troops, okay? You remember the story? Everybody, they're getting ready to cross over, to leave that which is behind. In Leviticus, God says, leave that which is behind. Don't do what you did then. And when you go into Canaan, don't do what the Canaanites do. Be holy because I am holy. And in the same way, we see some things playing out here with Joshua. As Joshua has gathered the troops, he's having a little, uh, he's giving them a little cheerleading shot in the arm mini sermon. And he's reminding them, this is where we've come. If there are those of you that want to hang out back there and want to live like that and continue to live like that and worship like they did and do those things like they did, then so be it and you make that decision. And you'll live with that decision. But then he says this, but as for me and my house, we will choose to serve the Lord. Choose you this day whom you will serve. But for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We stand on the edge, and we look out, and we realize God is calling us to a land maybe where we know not. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that looks like. And again, I'm not just talking about that general conference stuff. I'm just talking about ministry in general for for life of us uh, here at Asbury. But... uh, we have some choices to make. What are we going to do? Are we going to do the same old, same old? I don't want to get a year from now and, and go, crud, we went through 2019 and just we're right back to where we were in January a year ago. I, I don't want to do that again. I, I just, I've been there, done that. I want to be, be a part of a movement of God. I want to be a part. Of, and, and, and you know, Methodism has and really still is a movement. Methodism, as, as, as Wesley would have placed it out before us, is still a movement under the power of the Holy Spirit. And so today, here's the deal. I'm going to invite you. They're, the praise team is going to lead us, invite the praise team to come up. They're going to lead us in a song, all right? And I, wanted to, I want you to think about some things. It's, this is on the app and for you th- in the life group uh, who are doing the questions, but... Um, Here's some questions to think about. What challenges are you as an individual facing in 2019? What are you facing? And what do you think we're facing as a church here at Asbury Church? What's the rut you find yourself in? Are you in a rut? How willing are you to do whatever it takes to get out of the rut? Are you willing to do what it takes to be obedient to Jesus? That implies change. Are you willing to change? To act upon whatever Jesus is calling us to do? You know, life's about choices. What choices are we going to make? As it it relates to even our own families and spouses and children and your walk with Jesus and your commitment to the church. And I don't mean just Asbury, but to the church universal. There are consequences for our choices. The Shana is both repetition and change and both can be good. And so I'm going to invite you to come and pray with me. All right? Stand, if you will. And we're going to close in this song. And the praise band is going to lead us. And, and Mary Lou will be sensitive to how things go here. But God did a number on us in the 8 o'clock service. This place up front was full of people praying. And I don't see why he wouldn't do that here because we're a part of Asbury Church. We're a part of a people who believe that God wants to do a thing in and through us and even in spite of us. And it's not going to happen without the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And it's not going to happen without saying, yes, we choose to follow you. We choose to follow you. And so we have a song called, Lord, I Need You. That's our prayer. And I'm going to invite you to sing. And I'm going to kneel down and pray. And you can come and pray. And I realize this isn't the most conducive for knees. If you need to sit on the benches up front or whatever you need to do, uh, you come and pray. Will you join me? The invitation is before you. 
come and pray. Would you lead us in song? Let's pray.